as you're joining in, of course, you can share this broadcast. Um, Psalm 18, 19. It says that he brought me forth also into a large place. And he delivered me because he delighted in me. In Psalm 18, 19, in Psalm chapter 30, verse 6, we look at the text saying, in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. In my prosperity. What I want you to look at is that both of these texts is dealing with God bringing you into prosperity. You know, Psalm 118, verse 25, save now, beseech thee, O Lord, send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Prosperity is first the mind achieving the thought life that God wanted it to have, the imaginations that God wanted it to have. But then prosperity is your emotions experiencing the oil of joy and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Uh, both of these aspects is how prosperity begins. Prosperity begins first with the inward man uniting with the Holy Ghost. When the unification of the Holy Ghost happens inwardly, then on the outside, physical prosperity is the reward for that accomplishment. So if you look at what, what God is prospering Abraham first mentally and emotionally, because he detached himself from his father's house, which means that even his emotions had agreed with it. Do you know that your mind could do something and your emotions disagree with it? And your emotions can manipulate your mind to undo what you did. Ah. Uh, your mind could do something and your emotions could disagree with it. And your emotions will undo what you did. Let me show you in the scriptures. So the young man ran up to Jesus and said, what could I do to inherit life, right? His mind did that. The Bible said that he walked away grievously. The emotions undid what he did. Think about that. It said that he walked away sorrowfully which means that the emotions begin to dispute and manipulate him into thinking that what Jesus had told him to do was grievous and sorrowful. So there are times in one's life where you could do things mentally that are of the spirit and your emotions which you have not submitted it to the Holy Ghost is still in unification with the demonic. You can undo what you did. And this is all in your soul. So your soul got different departments. So if you think about this, when third John is saying, I wish above all things that you prosper, that first prosperity level and that dimension is inside of you. That prosperity is the mind, the will, the emotions coming into unification with the Holy Ghost. So when God wants to prosper you, he is after getting all of the elements of your soul in agreement with his request. That's why John chapter 14, 15 says that if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15, 14 says that you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. 
John 15 verse 3 says that you are clean by my word that I've spoken unto you. John 15 verse 3. So you understand that how does God get the soul into prosperity is by the word that you do. James chapter one says, don't just be a hearer of the word and not a doer deceiving yourself. He gets the soul into prosperity when you start doing the word. Now, I want you to see this. Remember what happened in John chapter one, the word was made flesh. So the word could metamorphose into things. So the word could be made a body, but the word can also be made a house, a vehicle, a new job, a million dollars, healing in the body, a divine relationship, an open door, debt cancellation. The word does not stay as just uh, statements and sentences and phrases. God made the word to be able to become anything that will bring his children joy. So all throughout your life, you have seen the word become a verdict at the courthouse. You have seen the word become uh, a healing in your blood cycle. You got a regular blood cycle. The blood cycle get healed. You have seen the word become healing. You have seen the word become peace. Even though you're in a tough situation, you calm. You have reassurance. You, you are in confidence. You have seen the word become salvation from a car accident. You saw that car flash right in front of you. So you understand that the word does not just remain as letters put together and spoken or written, but the word also becomes anything that you're scheduled to receive and obtain. Harvests, possessions, provisions, supplies. So this is the first element of prosperity. And I'm, I'm showing you something. A lot of times you're eager to get the physical prosperity of physical things. But you have disregarded the stagnation and the underdevelopment of the inward prosperity, which matters to God the most. What does it profit a man to gain the world, lose his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for what? His soul. It says, strive to enter into that straight gate. For broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Only a few there be that finds it. And then we deal with uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says that um, uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count, some count slackness, as some men count slackness. But he is willing, he's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So the soul prosperity is what God is after. He already has it in his bag to give you physical prosperity. He already has it in his bag to give you uh, financial prosperity, um, housing prosperity, vehicle, vehicular <laughs> prosperity. Um, physical clothing prosperity. He already has that in his suitcase. That's nothing. So when the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, he's seeing, will you let me give you the prosperity that I really am looking for first? That's why the Bible says, if you lay down your life, you'll find it in me. But he that saves his life will lose it. But when we deal with Luke 9, 23, when it's saying that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. 
we dealing with the soulish prosperity where he's saying for you to follow me, your soul got to be in prosperity. For you to take up your cross, your soul got to be in prosperity. For you to deny yourself, your soul got to be in prosperity. So you know that your soul is in prosperity when you are in the phase of pitting yourself last. Where it's no longer about you. I don't want to live here with these people. I don't want to work here. I don't want to be bothered with them. Now, the soulish prosperity kicks in when you can't have your way. See, I'm going to show you how the kingdom works. The kingdom works this way. I can't have my way right now. But due season, I will have my way. And by the time I have my way, my way has been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit's way. So it's not corrupt. While I'm not having my way, the Holy Spirit is conforming what I thought was my way to his way. That's why Isaiah 55 verse 8, your ways are not my ways. You, through patience, receive the ways of God. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the desires are being given by God because while you was waiting and being patient and being submissive, your heart was being changed to actual desires that God had for you. Wow. So now it's not just you desiring a specific car, desiring a specific lifestyle. That lifestyle is being influenced by the Holy Ghost because while you lay down your life through the patience. Now you get to see exactly what God desired and the thing comes to you. Why? Because it's in alignment with him. Now, I want you to look at this. When you're looking for physical prosperity and you're worried and fearful and anxious, God knows it damages you to receive physical prosperity and you never let the soulish prosperity be established. Because with that same broken soul that's not in prosperity, you're going to manage all of that wealth in that broken soul. So if somebody say, hey, I'm coming to your city to do this, or I'm going over here to the city, you, you will travel there because you got the money. It's nothing to you. You'll go book your hotel. You got the money. See, you got the physical prosperity, not the soulish prosperity. So your soul is still desiring stuff that is outside of the mind of God. And what's make it so bad, you got the money to accomplish it. So The Holy Spirit at times even tweaks the period of your harvest. You know why? Because there are some things that you have reopened up yourself to. Listen to me. It's powerful. I mean, you've been on the right path, but lately you've been feeling bored. You've been feeling, you know, a little dry. So you want to water yourself by breaking boundaries. When you show the Holy Ghost that consistent soulish pro prosperity is not your priority, he does have to set the due season back. And he does it according to what is beneficial to your recovery, your restoration, and also your uh, recognition, like your understanding not to open up yourself again futuristically to that.
Are you seeing? So there's a time where you can open up yourself to things and the Holy Spirit will set back the harvest and put it back later on in time because there needs to be a revival, a renewal. And then also there needs to be a rebuke, a revival, a renewal, a rebuke. So, so you need to be rebuked because the Holy Spirit, like you just showed me that you're going to open up yourself to that. I can't afford that happening if I place $500,000 in your hands. Because that's how Satan going to be able to intercept the money. And your mind is not going to be with me. It's going to be with the same realm that you just opened up yourself to. And that realm disrespects me. So what's going to stop you from bailing that person out of jail? What's going to stop you from loaning that person that amount of money? What's going to stop you from giving to people? Just because they say, hey, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. Give, give me something. What's going to stop you? Because you are already self-willed. You are already selfish. Which means, do you know what selfishness really means? That you can make a decision without inquiry of God. That's what selfishness is. Selfishness is when you're more concerned about your atmosphere than the Holy Ghost. You're more conscious of your soul, not the Holy Ghost soul. You know the mind of Christ is really the Holy Ghost. The mind of Christ is the Holy Ghost teaching you. The mind of Christ is the Holy Ghost teaching you. The mind of Christ is the Holy Spirit's conversation with you. That's what the mind of Christ is. So when the Bible says, I think that's Philippians, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The mind that's in you that's also in Christ Jesus was a mind that was in prosperity. And so it was in Holy Spirit direction and influence all of the time. And see, Matthew chapter four is so powerful because you look at when Jesus, his mind was not in prosperity. It was in temptation. So understand that your mind is not always in prosperity per se concerning the moments that's at hand. And that's where you got to bring the mind back into prosperity as its parent. You got to let the soul be the child and you bring it back into prosperity. Because we look at the story of Jesus. When you're being tempted, your soul not in prosperity. That's why people make poverty decisions. That's why people make decisions that affects their finances, affects their health. Because when you're in temptation, you're not in prosperity. Your soul is not in prosperity. So you, you got to identify that in your life too. There are times where your soul is not in prosperity. That's where you'll say something wrong. You'll do something wrong. You'll connect to somebody wrong. You'll open up yourself to somebody wrong. When your soul is not in prosperity, there is a cycle of you mishandling time. You'll spend 10 minutes watching a reel that you was never supposed to watch. You'll be scrolling on your phone, taking up time. You won't even tell the Lord, thank you. you won't, you're supposed to be his daughter, his son. You won't even say hallelujah. You won't even shout unto God, glory to God. You won't even. When your soul not in prosperity. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. And mountains bow down and the seas will roar. 
at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I love you. Forever I'll stand and nothing compares to the promise I have in you. You deserve the glory and you deserve the honor. Lord, we lift our voice in worship as we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our voice to worship as we lift your holy name, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There So great, and there is no one else like you. Oh, 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 there is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles. So great, there is no one else. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. And mountains bow down, and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the works of your hands forever I love you forever I stand and nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Nothing.
to the promise I have in you. Nothing compares to the promise I have Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing, all the power and majesty, praise to the King, and mountains bow down, and the seas will roar at the sound of your name, of your name, and I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Imagine singing that to the Father in eternity. Imagine, what if, what if the father called you to the throne and said, I want you to sing, shout unto the Lord, shout to the Lord to me. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise. To the king and mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name, of your name. And I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. Imagine you standing before the Father at the throne and you singing to him. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. Life is full. There's so much evil happenings in life throughout the course of your life. Even if you're obeying God, evil stuff going to happen to you. You might as well learn to praise God and focus on God. Stop focusing on the trial. You're not going to do nothing but destroy yourself. You don't overcome nothing in this life by focusing on what's, what you're overcoming. Don't focus on what you overcome. Focus on who has overcome. Don't focus on uh, overcoming. You focusing on things that you are going to. Don't focus on what you're going to overcome. Focus on the overcomer. Focus on the overcomer. When Jesus comes, the tempest power. Is broken when Jesus comes. All fear is wiped away. He takes the gloom and he fills your life with glory. All is change when Jesus comes. To stay or to say when Jesus comes, the tempest power is broken. When Jesus comes, all fear is wiped away. He takes the gloom 
And he fills your life with glory. All is changed when Jesus comes to save. All is changed when Jesus comes to stay. All is changed when Jesus comes to stay. When Jesus comes. Oh, the tempest power is broken when Jesus comes. All fear is wiped away. He takes the gloom and he fills your life with glory, all has changed when Jesus comes to say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone, and I know, I know who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I know, I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And I can see clearly now here on my knees. I can see clearly now here on my knees, I can see clearly now, here on my knees, I can see clearly now, here on my knees, falling on my knees. Bow down, bow down, falling on my knees. Bow down, bow down, I can see clearly now, here on my knees. I can see clearly now, here on my knees, falling on my knees, bow down, bow down, falling on my Bow down, bow down, I can see clearly now, here on my knees, 
I can see clearly now Here on my knees I can see clearly now Here on my knees I can see clearly now Here on my knees Falling on my knees Bow down Bow down Falling on Bow down, bow down, I can see clearly now, here on my knees, oh, 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 oh. I can see clearly now. Here on my knees See, you need to learn to stop trying to look at the thing that you're trying to overcome I mean, the situations of life are always going to be weird All the time, it don't matter how anointed you are it don't matter how much favor you have on you. You gonna experience some very, very awkward times in life. And what I'm telling you is don't focus on the times that you're in. Focus on Jesus. Don't focus on the times. Don't look at your cross. Don't look at your cross. Look at your Christ. 